So you know your stuff, huh? Animal test 63. I'm going in. Hey, yeah. Lights out. Oh! These days, I'm honestly shocked at how few people actually use Rosaria. Of course, most people know that Rosaria is strong, but most players, if they are not free to play, if they have access to one single five-star cryo unit, usually forget about Rosaria's existence. Though she's not Ayaka or Ganyu, she's very powerful and a staple in one of the best free to play friendly teams. So today we're gonna be talking about Rosaria's kit, build, and teams, and overall just how to get the most out of Rosaria and what she's good at. As always, I'm gonna be pretty detailed here, but Rosaria is definitely an easier character Character to play that gets a lot of value. As always, if you enjoy the video, it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe down below and leave a comment or a like just letting me know that you did enjoy it. And lastly, I go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, so if you're interested in seeing some live Genshin Impact gameplay or just, you know, live games in general, make sure to go follow there and catch me when I'm live. With all that being said, my name is Braxophone and let's talk about Rosaria. So first off, I want to talk about Rosaria's kit. Her elemental skill is a two-hit cryo damage attack that teleports behind most enemies for the second hit. Now, I say most enemies because some enemies, including larger ones or ones with shields, won't actually be able to be teleported through. That doesn't mean you're not going to get the damage, but it does affect some things later on. When the second hit connects, she actually generates three particles, which is pretty solid for both herself and other cryo units in the team. Keep in mind, though, if the second hit doesn't connect, she's not going to generate any particles at all. So it's important that the second hit does hit something. With her first ascension passive, when she uses her skill, she gives herself 12% crit rate for 5 seconds if she hits an enemy from behind. Now this is where the important part about large and shielded enemies come in. If you end up using her skill against a larger enemy, you may miss out on that crit rate bonus. Her burst is actually where most of her power is at though. Rosario will deal cryo damage and place a small cryo AoE that'll deal damage every two seconds. When you go ahead and use it, it will retain all of the stats that Rosaria had before you cast it for the entire duration. That means if you get a buff like Thrilling Tales, Noblesse, a Bennett buff, all of those attack bonuses will persist through the entire burst. The thing that actually makes her burst so good though is that there's no internal cooldown on a cryo application, which just means that Rosaria can melt or apply cryo every single hit of her burst. It makes her really powerful for freeze teams, melt teams, and anything that wants cryo applied. And with her second ascension passive, she's able to share crit rate with the rest of your team when you cast her burst as well. Specifically, she's going to take 15% of her own crit rate and give it to all of your party members. Some characters, including Rosaria, can also snapshot crit changes, which means that if you use Rosaria's skill and hit an enemy from behind before using her burst, Rosaria will gain 12% crit rate for for the entire duration. It also only costs 60 energy, which is just super easy to fill up with a lot of cryo compositions, and you're not going to have a lot of issues with it. Unlike some characters we've seen, Rosaria's kit is complete and works extremely well across the board, and it's actually one of my personal favorites in terms of design. As far as talent level up priority, you should focus on her burst first, because that deals the most damage, then her skill, because that deals the second most damage, followed by her normal attacks if you're going to level those at all. Now, if you've skimmed ahead at all, you'll notice that I'm not covering physical Rosaria in this guide. To be honest, it'll just take a lot of time, and overall, there are so many characters that are better users of Crescent Pike than her, even with all of her debuffs and her being a cryo character. In this guide, I want to focus on the best possible builds, so I'm going to be telling you guys about her best artifact sets and setups, and unfortunately, those do not include physical damage build. It's one of those things where it can work, but just because you can doesn't mean you should, because there are just better options. But again, we're going to go ahead and move on to artifact sets and stats now. One of the hands down best things about Rosaria is that she can just use so many sets. And Melt specifically, there's not one four piece that's definitively best and it will ultimately come down to your substats. For Melt Rosaria, you can use any two piece combination of Noblesse, Gladiators, or any other 18% attack piece, Blizzard Strayer, Wanderer's Troop, or even Emblem of Severed Fate. All of these sets provide some sort of bonus for reverse Melt Rosaria and with them being two piece sets, it's really easy to farm for the right pairs and stats. You can also go for four piece Emblem of Severed Fate here 
and that would be solid. But I would generally avoid four piece noblesse on Rosaria in melt teams just because you're going to be running Bennett with her already, and he almost always carries four piece noblesse. Now, as far as stats go, with a reverse melt setup, you want to aim for an attack percent or elemental mastery sands, a cryo damage goblet, and a crit rate or crit damage circlet. The difference in elemental mastery and attack on reverse melt Rosaria is actually really noticeable in the right setup. Since you're already going to have a massive attack buff from Bennett, and all of her burst hits can melt, elemental mastery ends up being a really solid choice to improve her damage. With that being said, attack is definitely not a bad option. You can totally use it. It's going to be fine for her damage. It's just that in high end content, when you're at the end of the game, elemental mastery can be better. If you really want, you can also use energy recharge, but I've found that with other cryo units, Rosaria's energy generation is never really that bad, and she doesn't really need a whole lot of energy recharge to get her burst up quickly. For reference, my Rosaria is comfy at around 120% ER. As far as crit circlets go, Rosaria is actually a character that doesn't always want to follow the 1 to 2 ratio of crit rate to crit damage. Because Rosaria shares crit with the rest of your team, it can actually be more beneficial to try and get her crit rate up, even if the crit damage ends up being a little bit lower. Just be aware that you don't necessarily need to go past 88 crit rate on her, and to be honest, I would say 80 is more than enough in a melt setup. The reason you don't ever need to go past 88 is because as long as you teleport behind an enemy, you're going to increase her crit rate to 100% anyways, so you'll be able to get the full use out of her passive. Lastly, for substats, you're going to want to prioritize energy recharge until about 120%, then follow with crit rate and damage, elemental mastery, and attack percent. So now that we've covered everything in melt, we're going to move on to a freeze setup for Rosaria. Just keep in mind, these things may be a little bit different from each other, and that's why I had to separate them, but it's all good information to have, especially if you're leveling Rosaria in any fashion. <laughs> So Freeze has some minor differences, but one of the major differences is that Freeze basically always wants to use a four-piece set. The two sets that you want to look at for Rosaria in a Freeze comp are going to be four-piece Blizzard Strayer and four-piece Noblesse. Now the value out of Blizzard Strayer is that you're going to get 40% crit rate against enemies that are already frozen, as well as a 15% cryo damage bonus. Now it is worth noting that she can't actually share this crit rate with anyone because it's crit rate that's applied on hit, but not crit rate that's actually applied to her stats. So she won't be able to share the 40% crit rate, it is going to make it so her crit crit share is a little bit less useful, but it makes building her for higher damage much more valuable and easier to do. But outside of that, in a freeze team, if you don't have someone that's already using four piece noblesse, you can actually put that on Rosaria and she'll use it just fine. You will lose out on a little bit of damage from her, but overall your entire team's going to get a 20% attack bonus whenever she uses her burst, which should be pretty often. There is one sort of minor thing you want to be careful of though, if you are deciding to use four piece blizzard strayer, which is basically that it's really easy to overcap on crit rate with it. In a permafreeze team, you're basically always going to have Cryo Resonance active, which is another 15% crit rate. Plus, you're going to get the 12% crit rate from Rosaria. Plus, you're going to get the 40% from Blizzard Strayer. Ultimately, it is going to be very easy and quick to overcap on crit rate. And in general, you're probably going to want to avoid running that on a circlet. So for stats, it's actually really simple as well. You don't even have to worry about Elemental Mastery in a Freeze team. You're just going to give her attack percent on her sands, a Cryo Damage Goblet, and a Crit Damage or Crit Rate Circlet. And as I just mentioned, if you're using 4-piece Blizzard Strayer, Crit Damage is probably going to be the way to go. And for substats, you want to get her energy recharge to about 120%. A lot of cryo characters provide a lot of cryo particles, and so you don't necessarily need to give her a ton of ER most of the time. And then on top of that, you want to prioritize crit rate and damage and attack percent. Just keep in mind, like always, your setup will completely depend on the state of your account and your substats, and your weapon choice will likely depend on that as well, which we're actually going to talk about right now. Rosaria's weapons are pretty straightforward, since you end up building her like a DPS, but there are also some support weapons that get a lot of value on her as well. First off, Rosaria's best in slot for damage is going to be Staff of Homa, just because it's broken like on everyone else. It gives you an attack bonus based off your max HP, and it's also got 5 star base attack with a crit damage main stat. When you're below half health, the attack doubles, but even without the attack doubling, it's still the best refinement 1 weapon. But really closely with that, we actually have Wavebreaker's Fin. It's really good even at refinement 1, but at refinement 5, it can be pretty competitive with Homa. The main reason is because so much of Rosaria's damage comes from her burst, and Wavebreaker has high burst damage bonus based on total energy requirements for the team. If you run a team with high burst costs, it gets even stronger and ends up making Rosaria deal more damage as a result. Vortex Vanquisher is close to even with Wavebreakers when you're shielded, but you won't want to play shield with Rosaria unless you're in a freeze team. As far as Jade Sphere goes, it's pretty solid, and at max stacks, it can have its attack buff snapshotted by Rosaria's burst to increase her damage by a lot for that entire duration. Now, Calamity Queller, just like 
like all of the other 5 star pole arms is actually a very solid choice. You will unfortunately get its effect cut in half and you won't be able to get the max bonus damage out of it. However, it has such a high base attack that attack percent bonuses on it do end up giving you a lot in return. And on top of that, the damage bonus from it is still good even if it's cut in half. Skyward Spine is also good for the high base attack, small crit rate bonus, and energy recharge main stat that makes Rosaria easier to use. Now the rest of the weapons are actually just really close with each other. You have Lithic Spear and Engulfing Lightning, they're solid choices in the right setup. Even at one stack, Lithic Spear is a great 4 star option, and Engulfing Lightning is just a great overall weapon for uptime and rewarding a solid energy recharge stat. Engulfing is better at R1, but Lithic at Refinement 5 can actually beat it out. Outside of that, Black Cliff, The Catch, Deathmatch, and Favonius are all good as well. Favonius is going to be the lowest damage out of those though. In general, I wouldn't suggest using The Catch on Rosaria if you're using Shangling or Raiden, because you'll see higher damage payout with that weapon on those units, but if you're not using The Catch on someone else, it's pretty solid. You also might find that with Favonius in particular, you just don't need the extra battery from its white particle generation. In some teams you might, but that's just something you'll probably have to experiment with. And if you don't have any of these weapons and you are unable to get a hold of any of these weapons, go ahead and go with the prototype Star Glitter. It's an energy recharge main stack craftable weapon that actually is pretty solid, has decent stats, and it'll hold you over on Rosaria just fine. Last but not least, Dragonsbane is actually very good on her in reverse mount setup. Dragonsbane deals extra damage bonus to enemies that have Hydro or Pyro on them, and also has an Elemental Mastery main stat. Because it has that Elemental Mastery main stat, you might actually want to switch to an Attack Sands if you're running Reverse Melt Rosaria, just because EM does have diminishing returns after a little bit. With the right stat bonuses, buffs, and team setup, it ends up being one of her better weapons, especially at high refinements, it can actually compete for the top spot. Rosaria is super easy to build, just because she works with so many weapons, artifact sets, and team setups. She honestly might be one of the easiest characters to get value out of in the entire game, and that's why that weapon list was so long, just because there's so many that work. But speaking of teams, let's talk about her best team compositions. The first team that I want to show you guys today is the Reverse Melt Quick Swap team featuring Bennett, Xiangling, Rosaria, and Kaya. This is actually my favorite Rosaria team because it's incredibly easy to play and deals insanely good damage. It's very free to play friendly too since it uses two true free to play units, Kaya and Xiangling. Essentially, you're using Bennett to buff the entire team, but first setting up Xiangling to apply a Pyro Aura. You'll use Rosaria's skill to gain crit rate and snapshot Bennett's buff with her burst, followed by Kaya's skill and burst. After that, you just rotate through Bennett's skill, Rosaria's skill, and Kaya's skill to deal extra damage and generate energy for the next rotation. When this is done right, Rosaria is able to reverse melt every one of her hits, and it ends up being insanely strong. It's one of the easiest teams to learn and gets instantly good results just for how simple it is. You can also upgrade this team by replacing Kaya with someone like Shunha, or you can use Chong Yun in that slot instead for quadruple melts after you use Bennett's burst. I love this team a lot, and if you're free to play and struggling with harder content, this team is absolutely fantastic for that. Next up is a Freeze Team example featuring Rosaria, a Cryoflex, a Hydroflex, and you guessed it, an Animoflex. Why so many flexes? Well, as discussed in my Ayaka guide, if you've seen that, almost all of the Hydro and Cryo units in the game are extremely strong and work together in Freeze. You have a lot of flexibility to choose something like Quick Swap, where you run Kaya in the Cryo spot, Kokomi in the Hydro spot, and Kazuo in the Animo spot. Alternatively, you could also focus on something more sustained, with someone like Ganyu, or Ayaka, or Kokomi, or Mona, and Venti, Sucrose, or Kazuha. You see what I'm getting at? There's so many units that you can fit into these teams and still get a lot of value out of. The one thing to note is that in a Freeze team, you don't really want to opt for a Geo unit though, specifically because this can shatter frozen enemies and remove the 20% crit rate buff from Blizzard Strayer. Shatter is a weaker reaction than most, so it's best not to waste your freeze up time unless you're in a very specialized team. Another thing of note is that if enemies are frozen, they can't hit you, so a lot of times when you're not against boss enemies, it's actually fine to not take a healer with you with a freeze team and just opt for more damage instead. After all, if the enemies are dead, they can't kill you. Now the last team that I want to show you guys is a physical damage team featuring Razor, Rosaria, and two flex spots. The main idea is that you want to use Rosaria's Cryo to superconduct with Razor and make enemies more vulnerable. At Constellation 6 Rosaria, she gets even stronger since she can lower enemy physical resistance on her own. In the flex spots, you can really run just anyone, like Fischl, Tsingchul, Zhongli, Albedo, Diona, and other options as well. Bennett can also be solid here for his sustain buff, but I would not recommend Sara with Razor since Razor's damage is mostly sustained damage over time, and Sara's C6 definitely wouldn't see much use just because Razor is mostly physical damage. Alternatively, you could also use Eula instead of 
Razor and make one of the flex spots into an Electro Flex, specifically where I'd recommend Fischl. As stated a few times before, Rosaria is just an absurdly flexible unit because her kit is very strong for a 4 star and allows her to be built in a lot of different ways and used in lots of different teams. As far as Freeze and Superconduct specifically go, it can be hard to find a team that Rosaria isn't good in. But that's basically all I have for you guys for teams. If you want to see even more team setups, I recommend checking out Kuching mains. They do have a Rosaria guide up on their website and that link will be in the description. Now let's go ahead and move on to Constellations. Rosaria constellations are pretty valuable, but not all of them are focused on the same part of her kit. Rather than go over all of them in detail, I'm just going to go in depth on the more important ones and why they're good. So first off with constellation one, it seems good on paper, but with most optimal Rosaria setups, you're not actually going to have her on field attacking with normals, so it's not super useful. Her constellation two is extremely good though. It's going to extend her burst duration by four seconds, which is giving her two more ticks of damage per burst. It's one of the most important ones in her kit for damage, even though she's functional without it. Her constellation three is a small damage increase by leveling her skill by three. Constellation four is decent. It essentially just makes Rosaria generate more energy for herself. The key thing is that it's specifically Rosaria's energy and it's flat bonus, so it's not affected by energy recharge and it's not going to be shared with anyone else on your team. Constellation five is pretty good since it's going to increase her burst overall damage, and Constellation six is mainly a support constellation that'll decrease enemy physical resistance when they're hit by Rosaria's burst. It makes her much more valuable in physical teams, but it's not really for her personal damage. Overall, Constellation 2 is the most important one. If you're thinking about pulling for Rosaria constellations, but you already have C2, you definitely don't need any more. Of course, they'll help your damage overall, but she's not one of those characters that needs constellations to function. Rosaria is one of the most flexible free-to-play friendly units in the entirety of Genshin. Of course, there are other flexible characters, but Rosaria does such a good job of her role in so many teams. But still, because there are so many other cryo units, people will forget that she's useful in a lot of comps. She enables one of the strongest free-to-play friendly comps in the entire game and is absolutely worth building if you're struggling with endgame content and have a Shang Ling free. Even outside of Reverse Melt, she still deals a ton of damage over time and can enhance your freeze and physical damage teams as well. In my opinion, she's definitely one of the most solid four star units in the game and i definitely recommend you build her if you think she fits your play style thank you guys so much for watching my rosaria guide and i hope that you guys were able to take something away from it as always if you've enjoyed make sure to let me know down in the comments leave a like on the video and subscribe if you want to see more content i also have a second channel where i upload a little bit more unfiltered or just like shenanigans things that i wouldn't upload on my normal channel and the link to that will be in the pinned comment and in the description if you want to see stuff that is less genshin guides and genshin discussion stuff but maybe still genshin or maybe other games as well go drop a sub there. Lastly, again, I do go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Okay, bye!